Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father, from His only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Every year during the season of Lent, we three pastors prepare two sermon series that will help to lead us to Easter. The first series carries us through the Wednesday evening Lenten services, and we began that series this past Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. This year, we are focusing on the parable of the prodigal son, and I believe that we will have many thought-provoking conversations as each week we focus on one of the characters in that parable. Five uh, other clergy who are members of this congregation are preaching each of the five weeks, and they've all picked one of those characters, and I think we're in for a real treat as I dissect this text and talk about their role in that parable. And then the Sunday series, during the season of Lent, those sermons are focused on a book that we three pastors have recommended for the congregation to read. We know that it's not reasonable to expect that everyone will choose to or be able to read this book. So our preaching series, our Sunday morning adult studies, Pastor Tim is kicking that off at Founders Hall this morning at 9.30, and small group Bible studies will help everyone to become at least a little familiar with the content of the book. This year we have chosen the book, If You Want to Walk on Water, you got to get out of the boat. If nothing else, the title is compelling, and I already have fallen in love with the book. Written by John Ortberg. And I believe that there are powerful words of affirmation and encouragement for each of us in this book, whatever our age, whatever our socioeconomic status, whatever our political party affiliation might be, or whatever level of education we might have achieved. It's an easy read, and I hope that you'll choose to join in our version of Ascension Reads. I really wanted, as we were talking about getting ready for today, I really wanted to just read chapter one of the book out loud for you, because it's such a meaty chapter. But then coming to my senses, having chosen instead to use the book simply as a skeletal framework for my message today. On, on page 17 of this book, Ortberg says this about the struggle that Peter must have had with himself once Jesus invited him out of the boat, but now is confronted by the stormy sea. I've got it marked and now I'm still fumbling with it. The boat is safe, secure, and comfortable. On the other hand, the water is rough, the waves are high, the wind is strong, there's a storm out there. And if you get out of the boat, whatever your boat might happen to be, there's a good chance you might sink. But if you don't get out of the boat, there's a guaranteed certainty that you will never walk on the water. This is an immutable law of nature. If you want to walk on the water, you've got to get out of the boat. I believe there is something, someone inside us who tells us there is more to life than sitting in the boat. You are made for something more than merely avoiding failure. There is something inside you that wants to walk on the water, to leave the comfort of routine existence and abandon yourself to the high adventure of following God. So let me ask you a very important question. What is your boat? Your boat is whatever represents safety and security to you apart from God himself. Your boat is whatever you are tempted to put your trust in, especially when life gets a little stormy. Your boat is whatever keeps you so comfortable that you don't want to give it up even if it's keeping you from joining Jesus on the waves. Your boat is whatever pulls you away from the high adventure of extreme discipleship. Want to know what your boat is? Your fear will tell you. Just ask yourself this. What is it that most produces fear in me, especially when I think of leaving it behind and stepping out 
in faith. Over the years of my ministry with you here at Ascension, I've had the privilege of working with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beautiful, gifted, brave, faithful young men and women that you have entrusted to my care and to the care of so many trusted parents and adults who support youth, family, and children's ministry here at Ascension. If you've got the time, I can tell you countless stories of young men and women who have done exemplary things in the name of Jesus. Sometimes in my confirmation classes or in senior Luther League Bible studies or in adult gatherings, I've done the same thing with our church staff. I ask my class to share a name and a story of someone who has inspired them on their faith journey. And I often choose, it's, if I ask the question, I figure it's also fair of me to have to share a person's name. And I often tell the story of Amber Hager. Amber was born with a congenital condition that caused one leg to be significantly shorter than the other. And as she grew, as she grew that difference became ever more apparent. In elementary school, her tiny leg was surgically removed and replaced with a prosthesis. And as her growth and maturation continued, the prosthesis was replaced by size appropriate prosthesis. Amber was an amazing young woman. She didn't let that leg slow her down, and she became upset if you treated her differently than her peers. And I discovered that the hard way. Our youth room used to be where the Sunrise Conference Room is, up on the second level of Peterson Hall. And as I had gone to class one evening, I realized that I had left something that I really needed for class in my office downstairs. I looked around the room and I, was, I realized Amber was the closest to the door, but I thought, no, I, and I started to move to the next person. And she saw what I was doing and she called me on it. She said, Pastor Larry, don't. And what she was telling me was, don't treat me differently. And so I said, Amber, would you please go downstairs and get what I need from the office? Amber had what we affectionately called her water leg for swimming in pools and lakes. And when we traveled on summer tours as a youth group, she would take along that water leg in a special travel bag. And that's when we used the old number one bus, and there was a luggage rack on top. We'd have a couple of young guys on the ladder on the back who would lift the luggage up on the top, and then it was sorted and stored, tied down with a tarp. And when, um, as we would be loading that bus in the mornings, as suitcases and sleeping bags were tossed up from the ground to the top of the bus, you could hear the luggage crew call out, Amber's leg, and there the bag went flying up on top as her special carry bag was, was uh, tossed up and uh, put in a secure place for our traveling time. Every June, our Senior Luther League has a water ski retreat on Lake Mojave on the Colorado River. Amber watched her peers learn to water ski and wakeboard and she desperately wanted to also learn. After we talked it over, and I think it might have been with Dave and with Lee, both were out there on that retreat. As we talked it over, we decided to give it a try. Amber took off her prosthesis and put on a life jacket. And to acknowledge the level of trust that was operating here, Amber had never previously removed her prosthesis in mixed company. She removed the leg, didn't wear a prosthesis to try to water ski, uh, put the life jacket on, got out of the boat, and after a bit of coaching, tried her version of walking on water, water skiing. She tried time after time until her arms were exhausted. <clears throat> but without the second leg to, to stabilize that ski in the back, it just wasn't working. The next day, we tried to help her out with someone in the water with her. Again, exhausted arms, no luck. We tried a shore start, no 
old luck. I think we tried this two or three years in a row with no success, but Amber continued to get out of the boat. Finally, her senior year in high school, she was our Luther League president. We were at Lake Nascimento for a leadership planning retreat. And during a break from our leadership training and planning time, our two host families took us out on the lake for some ski time. Gary and Pat, one of those couples, had a professional ski boat with an, a boom in the middle where the rope was attached and you could do all kinds of cool things, but that boom also laid over and extended beside and beyond the end of the boat. We thought this one might work. Again, Amber took off the prosthesis, put on her vest, received some coaching, got out of the boat, grabbed onto the boom pole and called out, hit it! like a water ski veteran. And she popped out of the water and she skied until she had to let go from pure exhaustion. You've never heard and seen such joy from her and her friends. Screaming out loud, she did it! <laughs> she did it! Pure joy, a smile on her face bigger than life itself. I was in the other boat taking pictures of all this, trying to focus my camera through my own tears. And in spite of other people's sense that this couldn't be done, in spite of her own fears and wonderings, Amber kept getting out of the boat until she was able to walk on water.